I have tested the M1 MacBook Air with Logic Pro, but now it's time to put the M1 MacBook Pro through its paces and see if it performs any better. Hello everyone, my name is Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. But today I'm gonna to find out if the MacBook Pro is any better than the MacBook Air with Logic Pro as they both have the same chip, but the Pro has an extra core GPU and a fan. So does it make a difference? Let's find out. So we've got the MacBook Pro base model with eight gigabytes of RAM. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the settings that we're gonna start off with and then go up from here. So we've got the buffer size set to 32. So this is ideal for anyone who wants to do live recording because the latency is at its lowest, which is perfect. I've also got the processing thread set to automatic, but later on we will do high performance to show you how many more tracks you can play with that. Now we're gonna start off with 60 because that was the limit of the other one before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually up it to 62 because it couldn't play 62 tracks on the MacBook Air. And if you haven't watched my MacBook Air Logic video, then definitely watch that. We've got the processing uh, CPUs just over here with the uh, memory as well, just so that we can have a look in activity monitor. So I've let the computer cool down, so there's no issues in terms of thermals, but we're gonna be pushing it throughout this uh, to sort of simulate starting off and then replaying and everything like that. So let's hit play. Okay, so it managed to play 62 tracks, no problem. Now let's up that to 75, let's, let's push for 75. Okay, so it couldn't handle 75, so let's drop it down to 70 and see if we can play that. Nope, so couldn't play 70 at all. Now let's try 65, let's see the difference. Okay, so it could play 75. So that is a five track improvement over the MacBook Air, which is pretty impressive. Let's try to increase the sample rate. So let's up that now to 128. So let's try 128. Let's try, no, let's, let's go up to 75. Let's, let's try 75, let's play that. No, so couldn't play 75. Let's drop it down to 70 at a higher sample rate. No, so couldn't, couldn't play it. So really it doesn't matter if you've got the sample rate uh, set to 32 or uh, 128. So let's up that to 512. Let's, let's give that a go. So let's up that and let's try 75 tracks again. No, so couldn't, couldn't handle it. So that's really, really interesting. So 70 looks like the limit uh, over here when it comes to the recommended settings. And yeah, basically made no difference when I had the buffer size to 512 or 32. So that's quite interesting. Now let's put it back to 32 and let's go to high eight core or eight four high cores on there, so let's apply. Now let's up the tracks to 90 and let's have a look and see if we can play 90 tracks on this thing. Okay, and it made it to the end. So let's have a look at the activity monitor. So strange, on the automatic settings it couldn't play anything, but the weird thing is, is that we weren't really maxing out the CPU. Now we've sort of unlocked the CPU potential, so basically maxing out the available CPU performance, we're seeing a much bigger peak over here, which is very interesting. Now in terms of uh, the memory size, yeah, it's it's basically sat around eight of, uh, six out of eight, which isn't too bad in terms of gigabytes. But yeah, in terms of the CPU, now that we've unlocked it, we're able to really push that CPU. Now the MacBook Air couldn't do 100 tracks, so, Let's just push it and see if we can do 100 tracks uh, on the MacBook Pro. Okay, so it handled 100 tracks, no problem whatsoever. Should we just jump to 110? No, so couldn't do 110. Let's just have a look at the CPU usage. So 
When we pushed up to 100 tracks, can you see the CPU usage did jump up a little bit. So let's try 105 tracks. No, so can't do 105 tracks. Let's move back down to 100. Let's see if we're still seeing any thermal throttling because obviously this one had the fan, the other one didn't. Okay, so it played 100 tracks, no problem whatsoever. CPU usage was just as high as before. And yeah, no, no problems with that whatsoever. So it does play a little bit more tracks in terms of uh, Logic Pro than the MacBook Air. So there's definitely a limitation when it comes to its thermals. Now let's up these buffer rate to 128 and let's try and do 110 tracks again. See if we can get that. So there's gonna be a little bit more latency, but when you're mixing, it's not so much of an issue. No, so can't do 110 tracks, interesting. Let's try 105 tracks. Okay, and it managed to play 105 tracks. So the final test that I think I'm gonna do is sort of up this to 512. So uh, obviously introducing a lot more latency, but if you're mixing, again, not gonna be a problem. Let's try and hit that magic 110. No, so even at that, it wasn't able to do it. So let's try one more, let's, let's go all the way top whack, so a lot of latency, but let's give it a go. So 110, no, so unable. So it looks like 105 is its absolute max, and yeah, those were the performance settings. Uh, we've seen a big, big difference, and throughout the whole thing, I, I'd sort of had a look and seen if the bottom of it was hot. No, it wasn't. As you heard, the fans didn't turn on at all whatsoever. So really, really impressed with that. The M1 MacBook Pro does perform better than the MacBook Air. If I had to put a number on it, I would say it's about 10% better, and the eight gigabytes of RAM seems to be plenty. Now the Pro model being 300 pounds more than the Air, if you are looking to get into music production or recording, either as a student or as a hobby, then I would go for the M1 MacBook Air over the Pro and spend the extra money on some better music equipment, as I just don't think that the performance increase is enough for the price increase. Now there are some other things Things that the Pro does have over the air, like a brighter screen and better battery life. But if we're looking at purely price to performance, then the M1 MacBook Air is better value. Both models stayed cool and I couldn't hear the fan on the Pro at all, which was a surprise as the Intel models would turn on its fans almost straight away. And trust me, you could hear them. The only thing I will say is that if you are a more experienced user and you use a few plugins, then I would go and check out their developer website to see if the plugins work on the new M1 MacBooks, as right now only a handful of them work on the M1. I have tried connecting my audio interface and I haven't seen any issues with it, but again, check with the manufacturer. It's a very quick email. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion, so please leave a comment down below on what you thought and check out the links in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarMoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you know what to do. I've got two videos. You can pick the top one or the bottom one. Go ahead, click it. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.